Okay. Uh, the, the assignment was not write down the formula. Okay, it was to come up with the formula. It's not a lot of homework, so it's just written down. It's not going to get full credit. So to show me how to like, come up with the formula. You did not just come up with it by writing it down, is what I'm saying. You come up with it by writing it down. Be able to, with not very much work, show me how to come up with the formula. I'll let it slide this time, okay? But if I get homeworks that are just answers written down, they're not going to get full credit. Okay? You need to do your homework, and your homework needs to be done. Right? Does that make sense? If you just have answers, what's the point? I know the answers. I don't need you to tell me what the answer is. Yeah. Um, so, let's answer this question. Does somebody have an answer to? How many sides this thing must have, Oliver? Uh, 33. 33? I got 31. I got 33. You got 31. 31. 31. Oh, it's 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. Came up with the formula, all right. Uh, we kind of came with, we pretty much came up with it together last class. We all but wrote it down. The thing that we didn't do was we just like didn't write a formula down with n in it. That was what I wanted you to develop in your homework. Okay. So somebody walk us through like maybe with an example of, of a certain polygon how we could figure out what formula we would use with race. We would divide 5,000 times. No, wait, 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 wait. I want you to, like, help me come up with the formula. For, like, if I gave you, you know, a 27-sided figure, this is the formula that I would use. I would take that number and plug it into this formula. I don't know. Okay, let's try this. So I'll give you a... One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a six-sided figure. How did we last time come up with the number of degrees all the angles add up to six? They like we put all the triangles together and then they made Oh yeah, now you're talking about triangles. What do you mean by triangles? Where the like triangles we broke from? the shape up into the triangle. Okay, so like I start here. Yeah. And then do what? Both top. Let's go across to there. No. No. <clears throat> Sorry. We'll go where? To the here? Yeah. Right here. Here. Like that? Like that. Okay. So we broke it into so many triangles, and then what? Yeah. Seems like you were starting from here. When you started moving. <laughs> you like you add some angles and you that, so you take away those angles. I add some angles. I think I that weren't in the original shape. I think I know what you're saying, but if I look at these triangles, that's part of one of the angles we started with, right? And so is this one and this one. Right, those two together make this entire angle. Those two go together, those are part of triangles. Right? All of these angles, any angle of a triangle that it picked, it is part of one of the angles that we started with. So we don't have extras. The extras came from, I'll try and draw this pretty close to what I have here, was when 
we did this. Do like that? Kind of. No, that could have make it a little, a little bit better. Do it like that. So there's a bunch of extra angles in the middle that are not part of the angles around the outside. Okay. So we can we can approach it that way. We can approach it that way. How about if we start with this one? How can we find the total of the angles using these triangles? So a triangle is 180 degrees, so you would add up uh, four triangles. Right, add up four triangles worth of 180 degrees each. Yeah. Or a quick shortcut way to do that is to take 180 and times four. Times four, yeah. So we add it up four times, multiply by four, both same thing. So uh, I guess we could uh, 180 times four, 180 degrees times four triangles. How about this one? How do we handle this one? Yeah. You would um, do like the same thing, except you would subtract 360 degrees. Okay, so 180 times what? Six. Six, we made six triangles, one for every side. But then we have all of this stuff, right? If we added up all the degrees of the, of the triangles, We'd have 360 degrees too much where all the triangles meet in the middle. So we subtract 360. Now how can I turn one of these or both of these into a formula? What? You can go like, um, you can like use N for six because that'd be the angles. Okay, so I can like get rid of that. Yeah. Just call it N. Yeah. Okay. And then you can go ahead and you could and then pretty much 180 n minus 360. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that should give me, let's call it S for the, the sum of the angles. Right. How about this one? Is there a way to do that? Let's go here, Kyla. So you could have like, um, you could take the number of how many, uh, little things there are? Sides. Sides of them. Like it's the size? Yeah. And then Okay, that's what we're calling in. Then minus it. Minus what? Minus four. Minus uh, four? Minus, what? You don't um, need to do that. It's just right, I give up. n times 180 equals s. n times 180 equals s. What does n represent? n is the number of squares. Or not squares, sides. sides. And the number of sides. Or so triangles. Is the number of sides and the number of triangles the same? No. So we got six sides and how many triangles? Four. Four. If I had a seven-sided thing, how many triangles could I make? Five. If I had a twenty-sided polygon, how many triangles could I make? Eighteen. So the number of triangles we can make is always two, two less. Two, two less. less. So we take the number of sides and. And subtract two. two. Subtract two. Times we'll take the result, right? We're going to use parentheses because if I didn't, then I would multiply first and it'd be all messed up. So 180. But wouldn't that be the same as minus two? Yes. Yeah. yeah, that was the point of it. Is that they're the same thing? It depends on your style and your personality, which one you think of. Okay. Oh, Mr. Yeah. That's what I meant. Instead of four, I meant. And subtract two, yeah. and we'll find one eighty. So, okay. would it have been fine if you would have like done like you draw drew a picture up there like that? Yeah. And then had the like eighty. I mean, like um, had like n minus two times eighty equals times one eighty. Yeah, the one eighty equals that, and then solve it out. Uh, well. So that would be good, yeah. All right. I put it in. Oh. All right. So this guy has 5,580 degrees, the sum of the interior angles. Uh, let's use one of these formulas and work backwards to the number of sides. We don't have to use a formula, but we're going to. Danielle. All right. So if you take 580 degrees. 5,580. 5,580. That's not 5,000. Okay. And then you divide it by 180 since so we're getting the step of printing the 
um, sum or the sum or the yeah the sum of the n times minus two or time or reversing the time in times. Okay, so let me just put this then because you're you're using this guy right here. Yes. One eighty times n minus two. So this is what I meant by like strictly using the formula. We plug the number into the formula. Okay. So then you're saying divide this by 180 because we're reversing the multiplying by 180. n minus two is plus two. Well, what's this? Um. 5580 divided by 180? Mm -hmm. That's 31. So 500. Yeah, 500. Five thousand hundred eighty divided by one eighty should replace n in that equation. Should replace n? Should yeah, should replace n. Right? Yeah. Yeah, because then you have to take that then you have to take um, the answer to five hundred divided by one hundred eighty minus two. So you have to plug the number of times into that. Well, hold on. So this n represents the number of sides that a polygon has. We subtract 2 from it because that's we can always make two fewer triangles than we have sides. And we multiply that by 180. And that, when we get done doing all that, it should give us the, the sum. Right? So we did it like for the six-sided figure. We take 180 times 4 and get... Okay. Yeah, so there's 720, 720, okay. And, that, and we're done, right? That's the, the total number of, of degrees, if we add it all up. Well, here we have, like, the end. After the formula's been used, we've taken the number, we subtracted 2, multiplied by 180, and we got 5,580, right? Right, Kyla? We got 5,580 by doing what? Dividing by... 180. How did we get 5,580? By the triangles that, and the little sides that add up to it. So the triangle, okay, so we got some triangles. Yeah. And then, so we went from, how do we get from triangles to 5,580 degrees? 180 times the number of triangles. Okay. How did we go from the number of sides to the number of triangles? I don't know. You already said it once today. Huh? You subtract two. Okay, so you take the number of sides, you subtract two. Take the number of sides, subtract two, multiply by 180, and there we have 5,580. Right? So this is like the last step after we've multiplied by 180. So we divide it by 180 and we find 31. Right? 31 is this number. If you multiply by 180, you get 5,580. But is this number that you multiply by 180, is that the number of sides? No. You multiply the number of sides by 180? So, by dividing this by 180, we figured out what number we multiplied by 180. That's, that's the number of triangles on the number of sides. Right, so, I kind of fixed what I was supposed to be wrong because I forgot the algebra way to do it. Okay. So, then you take. Uh, since you can't have just n minus two, then you take um, plus. You do plus two on both sides. Okay, because negative two plus two is zero. Mm -hmm. and add two because you got to keep the equation balanced. And then n equals thirty-one plus two, which equals thirty-three. There we go. So if a, if a, a polygon had thirty-three sides, if we want to know the total number of uh, degrees, so the, the sum of the interior angles. We take the number. Subtract 2, multiply by 180, and that would give us in this case 5,580. Aiden? Okay. Uh, so we would take this, we would subtract 2, and multiply by 180, or we take this number and multiply by 180 and subtract 360. We could use that formula as well, real quick. 5,580 equals 180 times the number of sides minus 360. Okay. We can add 360 to both sides. 
Connor equals 360, zero, four, nine, 5,940, equals 180 times the number of sides. Bet 5,940 divided by 180 is 33. I hope so. Otherwise, I add. Okay. Before we get too heavy into solving equations, let's make sure we have some skills like simplifying algebraic expressions down. That's what we're going to work on. That's how we're going to start. Let's look at number. Ooh, just saw a couple of things going on there. Three. Okay, so here's something that I saw a lot. I'm not looking for the right answer. We're actually looking at the mistakes that I saw a lot. So, what I saw a lot was B minus 9 minus 2B. So, what's going on there? How did this person get nine, though? There's no reason why everybody shouldn't be listening to Aiden. So Aiden said this person has added three and six and gotten nine. Right? So, and why would somebody do that? Why? What are they thinking there? Aiden? Okay, they weren't thinking about like, okay, this happens and this happens. Okay. They were essentially doing the order of operations incorrectly. Okay. Like, you should subtract first and then add. You may not be realizing that it's different. If I were to subtract three first and add six, it's definitely different from subtracting nine. Okay? Let's look at it on a number line. Let's say this is B. Okay? We'll start at B. We're just going to ignore this for a second. Okay, so this is B. We're going to subtract 3 on a number line. What does it look like to subtract 3? Aiden? Go back three spots. So go to the left three spots. So let's say one, two, three spots. Okay. So now we're back here. I don't know what number that is. I just know that it's 3 to the left of B. Then we'll add 6. What does that look like? What's that? Go to the right. Go to the right. How much? Six. Six, okay. Well, one, two, three, that just gets me back to B. And then four, five, six gets me here. Where is that? Three. Three. Something about three. B plus three. This is whatever B is plus three more. Right? Okay. So we can look at it that way. B, if I subtract 3 and then add 6, it's the same as adding 3. Or, how else can I look at this and come up with positive 3? I can only, if I don't think about the number line, I just take these and wind up with 3. asking about this stuff turning into plus 3. Oh, I know how to do that. Okay, so how do we, we can think of it as minus 3 and then plus 6, or we can think of it just a little bit differently and come up with positive 3 another way. How does that help? Take do? minus 6, like put minus 6 over by the 3. Minus 6? Yeah, like minus 6, and then go over to minus 6 over by the Right there. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, what will that that'll make? Negative three. This will make negative. Uh, but here is a here is a, a common thing that I see as well. Okay. Uh, whether you want to have minus six or 
add three and add three. The person's getting a little bit confused with something. What are they getting? What are they mixing that up with? An equal sign, right? If I would have minus six and minus six, I'm, think, I'm confusing it with an equation where I would minus six and minus six where in an equation on both sides, both sides of the equal sign. Okay. Is there an equal sign here? No. So really, if you think about it, if I've taken, if I subtract six and then subtract six again, really what I've done is I've subtracted how much? Three. Minus six and then minus six again? Twelve. I've subtracted twelve. So I've taken what I was given, and then I just took a twelve away from it. Because there's, there's not a both sides here. It's not a both sides situation. So we just really subtracted twelve. What I'm trying to get at, is we can kind of look at this sign as two different things, whether we think of it as minus three, like subtracting three, or we can think of this negative sign as like belonging to three, making it another number. What number is this? B3. Negative three. Right? You can think of it as, as subtract three, or you can just think of it as the number negative three. See the difference? Okay. In one case, I'm not subtracting it from anything. It just is a number. It's a negative number, negative three. Okay. All right, because. We can think of that as negative three, it's just a number negative three, it's a number that's three to the left of zero. We add six to that, we wind up with okay. So if we're just simplifying the expression, don't subtract six from both sides or add three to both sides because there is no both sides. Well, we figure that out. Can we simplify this more, Aiden? B minus 2B is what? Negative 1B. Now, uh, here's another common misunderstanding. Number 7. 9 plus 5R minus 9R. <coughs> And I'll see, uh, let's say these two go together, and this person has written 14R minus 9R. Okay. What do you think about that? Yeah. Um, you can't add the number plus something else that doesn't belong with it. Because 5R, the R stands for something, but uh -huh. 9 is just like nothing to do with it, so. Okay, so they're different things? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in the other class, we, we came up with three really great explanations. So let's look on this one. So we have nine of something and five of some other thing. Mm -hmm. Apples and oranges. Apple oranges. Apples and oranges. We're really, Apple we are oranges. trying to add apples and oranges Wait, and getting 14 of oranges. That's not a thing. <laughs> okay. But well, let's talk about what this is nine of. What is this nine of? Orange is nine of apples. That's a good analogy, but what is it actually nine of? A number. What number? Nine of one. Nine of any number? Yes. So pick a number and I have nine of it? No. Nine is a number. Nine is just a number, but it is nine of something. What is it nine of? We don't know. It's just a number. Well, it's just a number. We don't know. The answer. So we have to find an answer, which there isn't one, and have nine of it. Oh, what's that? Nine ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine ones. That's all nine is. The number nine is nine ones. Okay? There they are. Nine ones for our analogy. Okay, this is five of something. What is this five of? Is it five ones? 
five of R. Five of R's. Okay, so there's five R's. If I add up these ones, what do I get when I add up those ones? Nine. What do I get when I add up all these R's? Five, five R's. R's. Five R's. What do I get when I add all of these nine ones, these five R's? You get, um, one get nine ones and five R's. There's no way to put those together. There's not 14 of anything there. The only way there could be 14 is if R happened to be one. If R also happened to be one, then we'd have nine ones and five ones, but we don't know what R is. Right? And we'll never figure it out either, by the way. Right? Have we ever figure out what R is? Nope. No. Why not? No. Because, because it's a number. No. It stands for any number. What would we have to kind of change about this so that R could be figure outable? We have lots of things left, so stop uh, an making answer? noise. Yeah. Still an answer? What do you mean by an answer? Uh, 9 plus 5R minus 9R equals something. Equals something. Yeah, it's got to be equals something. It's got to have like a result of all this stuff has to end in this, you know, 7. Okay, now we can figure out R. So it's not 14R because, well, it's 9 somethings plus 5 other somethings. Okay. Um, also, stop. Stop, in there, stop making noise, Clint. You know, you know like, I'm going to solve it if it's been, say, equal or something. If it's had, like, plus R and minus R. So you could do that and then you figure R out of the equation by itself. It's got to be equal to something, otherwise there's no way to say, yeah, you got it, you got what R is. There's no way to know what R can be. R can be anything. I can plug in one or I can plug in eight million into this R and just see what happens, right? Yeah. But there's no way to know right now what R is. But if it equals something, like Kyle said, then yeah, we, then we can figure it out. Or if it was R, um, if it was like two R minus two R and plus something. Well, 2R minus 2R would be just nothing. Yeah, and then you could say plus something. But still, R, what's R? It can be anything. R can still be anything. It would be a final number, but we would still not know what R is. Okay? okay. Um, let's say, again, that we're wondering if 9 plus 5R is 14R. Can we simplify it that way? that we can't, but here's another reason why. There's 9 plus 5R, and there's 14R. Okay, we have like 50 seconds. Um, well, let's make sure that we have all the way through 15 done by the time we come back to the next class. Okay, have a good day. Thank you.